We're finally ready to apply quantum mechanics to something uh, concretely chemical. We're going to look at how the hydrogen atom can be uh, described in terms of the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics. All right, well first, as we usually do, start with the classical description of the hydrogen atom, and then we'll make the appropriate changes, change things into operators, and formulate the quantum mechanical description, and then solve the Schrodinger equation. All right, here's our model. The model is the uh, electron, which is a negative charge, it moves around a proton, which is a positive charge. So let's just draw this here. Here's our positively charged proton, and here we have our electron out here, some distance away, r. Now this is a two-particle uh, system, and they have different masses. So technically, we could uh, say that the, the Hamiltonian for the hydrogen atom would be the kinetic energy of the proton plus the kinetic energy of the electron plus the potential energy of the proton plus the potential energy of the electron. But what we're going to make, uh, we won't ex explicitly state this assumption in this, but when we talk about quantum mechanics we will. We're going to make the assumption that the proton is stationary. All right, that's called the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. The proton is fixed. That's usually a good approximation because the mass of the proton is about 1,800 times the mass of the electron. So that means, well, we pretty much can consider that to be stationary in a similar way that we considered uh, reduced masses of a heavy and a light to be just equal to the reduced mass of the light. So if the proton is stationary, this implies that kinetic energy of the proton is equal to zero. Also, we recognize this uh, as a Coulombic interaction. Coulomb's law, positive and negative charges interact. So this can be combined, these two potential energies can be combined by Coulomb's law. All right, so Really, uh, if we consider this the center of our coordinate system and it's stationary, we just have to look at the electron coordinates there. So this was a real key assumption. <laughs> we got rid of a whole set of coordinates. We just say, okay, that's fixed. And then the electron is moving relative to that. So with those assumptions, the kinetic or the Hamiltonian will be equal to the kinetic energy of the electron plus the potential energy of the proton-electron pair. Now we said that the kinetic energy, the rotational kinetic energy of a particle moving around in space uh, spherically on a sphere was the angular momentum of the particle divided by 2 times the moment of inertia where the angular momentum was defined as the mass of the particle times its velocity times the radius at which it can be found about the point it's rotating. And then the a moment of inertia was equal to the mass of the particle times that distance squared. And now we're going to add on to this the uh, potential energy and as we said that's Coulomb's law that will give you the potential energy how the potential energy varies with distance between the two charges that will be um, 1 over epsilon epsilon naught charge in the first particle times the charge in the second particle divided by the distance between the two particles. All right, let's uh, recognize that this has a charge uh, of the electron and the proton has just the opposite charge. So this term will be negative and this we can replace as just E squared minus E squared where E is the charge on the electron. And similarly, this remembers the dielectric constant of the medium. We're going to set that equal to 1, and that's assuming that in between these two charges, we just have a vacuum. All right, so for those, with those of simplifying assumptions, I've run out of room here to write it, so just let me write it over here. H then can be written as the angular momentum of the particle divided by its, uh, twice its moment of inertia plus the charge, sorry, that should be a minus sign there because one of these charges is negative. So minus the charge in the electron squared 
divided by epsilon naught times r. So there's the classical Hamiltonian that we've um, for this model system. And now we're going to do the quantum mechanical Hamiltonian by making appropriate substitutions.